Now, lady, yes, now, lady, you know, she still feel like she still have that upper hand from the royal house whereby she can speak how she want to speak and everybody will listen to what she's saying. You know, she wanted to go back and forth with him. And that's when Kawe told her that, you know, she smelled like an ashtray. And that didn't sit well with her. Because she was like, since when you, you, you speak with me like this? Since when you started raising a voice, you know, to me? Since when you address me the way you, you address me? You know, I understand this is not the right time. I understand that you're dealing with the passing of your brother. But, you know, don't talk to me like that. You know, and we have seen Kawe apologizing. But he said, I hate people who speak bad about my family. I hate people who disrespect my family. You know, again, he is making sure that no one is going to come between them. He is making sure that he understands it. You cannot go around and get the gossip from the newspaper and start, you know, saying things that you don't even have proof. Because right now you are telling me that we are doing the heist, we are doing this, we are doing that, we are thieves, and we are not all of those things. You know, and he had to make it clear. But the way he spoke with her, you know, for the first time, you know, she saw that oof, it looks like this guy is not what I think he is. And... She apologized, of course. He apologized for the way he spoke also, of course. And when she tried to kiss him, you know, he avoided her. And that's when she said, okay, no problem, I understand. I'll go and brush my teeth. Because that means Kawa doesn't like, you know, the cigarette. Kawa doesn't like somebody who smoke. And he made it clear to her that you smell like an, you know, ashtray. And... On the other side, we have seen at the Zulu, at the royal house there at, you know, Rastenbeck, where Nalidi's father, you know, had a meeting with Mulifi and the rest of the family members. And he was telling them that whatever happened here is just a huge humiliation. People shouldn't know about this. We must just, you know, make a statement to say we postponed the wedding, you know, based on Nalidi's health. Nalidi was not well, but she is recovering and, you know, the wedding will proceed. And that's when Mulifi was like saying, but you know, they were guests. And those people will go out there and will speak about the whole thing. So we cannot hide this. And we have seen also when the father was saying, you know, they, they cannot disrespect, you know, this family. And we, we saw also Sefako was invited. Sefako was sitting down with Nalidi's father and they were discussing the whole thing. And, you know, for the first time, I've seen that Nalili's father, he is the one who is pressing this thing. He is the one who want them to get married simply because of he made it clear that, listen, leave everything to me. You know, Nalili, she's just blinded by now. She doesn't see that you're the right, you know, person for her. You know, it's just, you know, these Zulu people who are here who are like, you know, distracting her and making things difficult. But, you know, she will come to her sense. You know, I will speak with her. You know, she will be your wife. Just relax. Let's enjoy the drink, you know, and Sefako said something special when he said, I don't want to force her. I don't want her to feel like she's forced to marry me simply because of she's going to hate me. And if she hate me, she will hate the whole process of the marriage. And she's not going to be my wife because it's, it's not going to be right. You cannot even marry somebody who doesn't respect you, somebody who's not even happy. You know, but the father assured him that, you know, I will fix everything. I'll make show that, you know, all things go according to plan. Now, the episode was good because for the first time we have seen Mandisa sitting down with Ndumiso and she was telling Ndumiso about the passing of Ngoba. She was making things easier for him, telling him that you know that your father is normal, you know, he is no longer here with us, you know, physically, but spiritually, you know, he's still with us. And, you know, she was breaking down everything, and he, he said he understand. Of course, he's a young man. You know, for now, he, he understands what he understands, but he doesn't understand that his father is not going to be there for him. You know, because there are moments whereby we still see men three times, four times his age, still crying 
when they remember, you know, their father. When they reminisce about, you know, the teachings their father used to give them. When they reminisce about the great times the father used to, you know, bring into the family. When they sit down and, and remember how their father used to do certain things in the, in, in the family and why that family became what it is. It's because of, you know, how the father used to live and how the father used to do those type of stuff. You know, all those things will kick in later. Because in most cases, we think we just explain certain things to our children and that's it, they will get it. But it will kick in later. But I like the fact that she sat down with him and break the news to him. And she also took out his hat that he used to wear and she made him choose the one that he likes and he picked one that means he understands that this is like a baton it's like a relay race your father has been running that race until you know he stopped now he's giving you that baton you have to carry on that family say name that family claim that family you know rituals that family tradition you know you have to take that family to another level as one of you know the zulu young men that's how it is and that's how even in most cases you know most men are so excited when they have a boy child knowing that that you know boy child will be their successor that boy child will carry that you know family name with dignity and they will always be remembered that this is so and so son we are not surprised when we see him achieving this because of the father was doing this and was doing that during his time you know i just love how they break everything down and i just i'm just worried about the whole thing of mandisa because we know it happens all the time that cultural clash you know might be a problem because at the end of the day she must you know bury you know her husband and that's the battle that she cannot win the Zulu brothers are not going to back down. The Zulu brothers will do everything in their power to make sure that they bury, you know, Ngoba at home. Because, you no, know, she has to, to understand. And she has to do the right thing by allowing them, you know, to go and bury Ngoba at home. But she's a great actress, though. I like her. She's amazing. Like I've always been saying from season 1, season 2, and season 3, that Mandisa, she is amazing. Now it's just unfortunate because now she's all alone. And... She is fighting with those people that she was supposed to be united with so that she can survive. And I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know. She will just fight for the tavern. She will also have to fight for the house. And it's not going to look good, you know, on her side. And on this episode, we didn't see Uputom Dalang Kosana, you know. But I know he will come. I know he must be there to bury, you know, his younger brother. Maybe Mandisa, I mean, maybe Mandisa will, will find a way to compromise, will find a way to understand. And also, maybe Zandila might not even show up because the police are still looking for her, you know. But I appreciate you guys showing me love and support. I just wanted to speak about The Wife, Episode 7. Thank you.